Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today I continue working on Clementoni's 6,000 piece jigsaw puzzle, Downtown by artist Ciro Macchetti. I've already released one video which I've done 13 hours worth of work. I'll leave a link to that in the description below in case you haven't seen it. Um, if you have seen it, you'll notice, wait a minute, it looks like there's more done on the table. Yes, this intro is being filmed after having worked another 13 hours on the jigsaw puzzle. And that's what you'll see in this video today. So I've done a total of 26 hours. I, I can't pull myself away from the jigsaw puzzle. I absolutely love it. And there's a couple of different things I wanna chat about during the time lapse. I hope you enjoy it. One thing, it's a bit more difficult to do some close-up shots because when I'm working on pieces, they're often like a little bit all over the place now. But I do hope you enjoy the overhead shot and seeing it all come together. It's, it's amazing, it's absolutely beautiful. It's everything I want in a jigsaw puzzle, especially in a large piece count jigsaw puzzle. So without further ado and for the love of puzzles, let's continue working on Clementoni's 6,000 piece downtown jigsaw puzzle by artist Ciro Macchetti. I absolutely love this jigsaw puzzle. I am enjoying every single minute, every piece. I literally have to stop myself and pull myself away to do other things or else I'd just be sitting there all day, all evening puzzling. In the last video, I mentioned some of the qualities I like to see in a large jigsaw puzzle. One of which I forgot to mention, and that's being able to move sections around. For example, the hot air balloons. I built them down in one area and then I slid them easily into place. They did not fall apart. The jigsaw puzzle is not crumbly. One of the hot air balloons I even picked up and carried around the table. I was so impressed how well the pieces stay together. Beautiful, beautiful quality. Exactly what you wanna see in a large piece count jigsaw puzzle to make it easier to build being able to shift pieces all around without them falling apart. Absolutely love it. Now in building this jigsaw puzzle, I've learned that I've come so far since doing that Ravensburger 5,000 piece antique world map one. That one took me about 70 to 75 hours to do. And here at the end of this video, you'll see how far I've come in just 26 hours. And it has a thousand more pieces. I've just improved upon my technique and strategies and how I approach jigsaw puzzles just in general, even smaller ones. So I was wondering, would you like to see me make a video where I share some of my strategies in more detail and depth of how I build large piece count jigsaw puzzles? Now, of course, this is not to make it so that you do the jigsaw puzzle a lot faster. It's so that those people out there who would like to do a larger piece count jigsaw puzzle, maybe 2,000, 3,000 or more, often it can be overwhelming because you just don't know where to start or what to do. But I can share with you, you know, my approach and how I do things and whether or not it'll help. Um, I'd like to think so, but who knows? So if this is a video you would enjoy watching, please let me know, leave a comment below, and I can get to working on that. Now, Hubby and I were chatting about the different styles of architecture that are depicted in this jigsaw puzzle. We're very curious as to what influences are being shown. And I thought some of the houses, the very ornate ones, were maybe of a Victorian influence. And some of the other ones my hubby suggested, like Spanish, Italian, more like Mediterranean. So, of course, this led me to look up some of the characteristics of various architecture styles online and I just wanted to share a few with you here because I feel these are depicted in the jigsaw puzzle. So for example some characteristics of Victorian architecture like steeply pitched roofs, colorfully painted brick, ornate gables, church-like rooftop Finials. I had to look that up, but that's like a distinctive ornament at the apex of a roof. Two to three stories, 
like wraparound porches. And I thought a lot of those are depicted in the jigsaw puzzle. Now for Spanish style, and this is mostly geared towards houses because I feel a lot of these buildings are residences. So some main features of like Spanish style homes, one to two stories, minimal and uniform, smooth stucco walls, arches and curves, barrel roof tiles, again, also depicted in the jigsaw puzzle. And then when it comes to Italian villas, there was one comment I found online where it said grouped windows with rounded or straight tops. And several of the homes here do have grouped windows. So I thought that was quite curious. It'd be interesting to know whether or not the artist, Ciro Marchetti, took influences from these various styles of architecture or if he just kind of blended them all together and just did his own thing. I was also very curious about the domed roofs that are depicted in the jigsaw puzzle. So the first thing I found out that a domed roof is called a cupola. Now hopefully I'm cr pronouncing that correctly. I thought it was cupola, but I do believe it's cupola. They're usually bulbous or pointed and they first saw widespread use in Islamic architecture in about the 8th century. They often topped minarets, but were also built over the central space or on the corners of mosques, as well as on domestic buildings in the Middle East and India. Now from the Middle East, the cupola design spread to Russia, where in the 17th and 18th centuries, it gained great popularity in the form of the onion dome, which had the advantage of being decorative while not gathering snow during severe winters. Very smart. The Moors brought the design to Spain, and Islamic influence in the 17th century may be responsible for its introduction in Vienna, where it can be seen on many Baroque structures. Also throughout Austria and Bavaria, onion domes top countless small churches. I then wanted to look up red dome roofs, and I found one very famous one of the Florence Cathedral in Italy. Duomo di Firenze is the name of the cathedral in Italian. The cathedral's groundbreaking was in 1296. However, it wasn't completed until 1436. And after a hundred years of construction, and by the beginning of the 15th century, the structure was still missing its dome. In the end, the dome was engineered by Filippo Brunelski. Hopefully I'm pronouncing their last name correctly. The dome is an absolute masterpiece of art enchanting the world since the moment of its creation. They say it's the symbol of Florence and of Renaissance culture. It was built between 1420 and 1436, and it is still the largest masonry vault in the world. Brunelski's innovation was to create it without reinforcements in wood, since none could have sustained a cupola of this size. It is of an octagonal structure in stone and brick masonry with external diameter of nearly 55 meters, that's about 180 feet, and interior diameter of 45 and a half meters or about 149 feet. But in fact, it consists of two domes, one internal and the other external, each composed of eight cells or pendatives. One of these cells has a greater setback than the others and supports the rest. The two shells are united by the structure of 24 meridian and 10 parallel ribs. And the cavity between the twin domes hosts the stairway to the lantern, which is the top of the dome outside. And that consists of 463 steps. The bricks are laid in herringbone pattern and the external dome is covered in terracotta tiles marked by eight ribs in white marble. I was wondering what those things were called because you can see them depicted in the jigsaw puzzle as well. They're called ribs. Uh, that's quite interesting. So these converge towards the seraglio or the tightening, the ring at the top and in turn supporting the large lantern. So yeah, have you been to Florence and have you seen the Cathedral Duomo di Firenze and do you remember its red dome roof? Oh 
my goodness, I had to literally make myself stop so I could finish doing this video for you all. I have spent another 13 hours on the jigsaw puzzle, so that's a total of 26 hours, and look at it. It's coming together so beautifully. I absolutely love it. I wanted to point out some things that I'm doing to try to make it easier. Well, obviously I sorted and I think I did quite well and then I'm just working section by section, but there's a lot of hints like the lines in the water and then these little diamond uh, patterns as well too to help, which repeat up here, these are smaller. Um, what else? Uh, the sky, you know, lighter areas to darker areas, pinks. Really, that corner right there is going to be tricky, I think, with all the blue. The rooftops, you can tell, like, the directions the tiles go, and there's various different styles of tiling. So just kind of working section by section. I'm piling up pieces that go to that house. Right now, I'm working on all the building pieces. I can't wait. Here's just a little pile of miscellaneous pieces that I thought I would figure out where they go, but not yet. And concentrating by colors. Um, if you saw in this video, I did like all the greens and then I concentrated on the reds and now a lot of the building pieces, but I'm picking out, I'm like shuffling through the box and picking out pieces that are more distinguishable. And it's so much fun. I still have a bit more of that building left to do. Oh goodness, I have to point this out. I had this piece for the longest time. I couldn't figure out where it went. I knew it looked like a sail and not sky. I even said it to Paige. I gave it to her, she found it right away. Actually, I gave her my box of kind of miscellaneous pieces and I said, Paige, just, just have a look if you can figure out where they go. And she found quite a few and sometimes, you know, the more you look at it, the more you just can't figure out where things go and that's okay. But my goodness, look how beautiful it is. I really hope this is not too shaky. I try to not do too much handheld um, video because I shake so much and I wanna give you a good view. But there you go, video number two, 26 hours done. I can't wait. I don't think it'll take me too long to finish the building pieces. Let me show you how many I have left. I'll bring the box over here. These are all the building pieces. And then I have all the water to do. That hopefully won't be too bad. The tougher part will be the sky up there. So I think I definitely have quite a few hours left to go. I think I can knock these out quickly. Uh, the water, some of it won't be too bad, but then it's just gonna be a lot of blues. But yeah, loving it so far. Hope you're enjoying this. Honestly though, I absolutely love this jigsaw puzzle. I love the color. I love the illustration. I love the pieces. I love the epic size of it all. It's just beautiful and I love putting it together. I'm enjoying every minute of it. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!